once upon a time, there was a castle in which a young queen sat by her window, pensively watching the gently falling snow. She was embroidering a tiny blanket for the baby that soon would be born to her. As she drew her needle through the fabric, she pricked her finger, and three drops of blood fell on the snow beneath her window ledge. How wonderful it would be to have a daughter with hair as black as this ebony window frame, with lips as red as blood, and skin as white as snow. She would be the most beautiful child in all the land, and I would call her Snow White. Soon the child was born and was as lovely as the young queen at home. But it was not long before the queen fell ill and died. A year passed and the king married again. The new queen, called a militia, was even more beautiful than the first. One dreary day, Queen Militia stole away to the deepest, darkest part of the castle where she hid the mysterious formulas which retained her beauty. In this secret chamber stood a powerful mirror that would always speak the truth. It could never lie. The queen stood gazing upon a beautiful reflection. Magic mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? Oh, Queen Militia of beauty rare, Thou art at present the one most fair. But one who's young and full of grace is sure to take Militia's place. This will never be. I will not allow anyone more beautiful than myself. On the day Snow White turned 17, her father held a wonderful celebration in her honor. As soon as she had given a piece of cake to the last friend, Snow White ran to the king. Oh, Father, thank you for giving me such a splendid party. You are the kindest man in all the world. And you are the dearest child. Surely you are the most beautiful creature in all the world. The king was unaware that Militia was lurking nearby and had heard every word. She ran down the steps to her secret chamber and stood before her magic mirror. Magic mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? Oh, Queen Militia, at this hour, another's beauty has come to flower. Now more fair than thee by right, thou knowest her name to be Snow White. No one, no one can be more beautiful than I. I must think of a way to destroy Snow White's beauty forever. Several months later, the king became ill and died. Queen Militia, however, was not mournful. She'd found the opportunity she'd been waiting for. At length, she summoned the castle huntsman. When he arrived, she handed him a jeweled box and commanded him to take Snow White deep into the Black Forest. There, he was to kill Snow White and return with her heart in the box. The next morning, he asked Snow White to accompany him on a journey into the forest. She was delighted to go. When they stopped to rest, Snow White bent down and began to pick wildflowers. He was about to raise his knife when Snow White turned toward him, holding out a bouquet. These flowers are for you. I... I can't do it. What's the matter? Dear Snow White, Queen Militia commanded me to bring you into the woods and kill you. She told me that if I refused, she would have my head. Oh, oh, do not cry, my princess. I'll not harm you. But you must never return to your father's kingdom, Snow White. What should I do? Oh, run into the woods, quickly, and never come back. Hurry! Run! She ran as fast as she could, deeper and deeper into the forest. The strange, twisted shapes of the tree trunks appeared to be goblins, and branches looked like distorted arms reaching out to grab her. <laughs> Suddenly, 
she came to a clearing, and there before her eyes stood a charming little cottage. Her heart was pounding as she knocked on the door. No one answered, so she slowly pushed the door open and cautiously peeked inside. Hello? Hello, is anybody home? Oh, look how sweet. Everything is in miniature. Could children live here? It's all so tiny. Snow White looked around and discovered there were seven of everything. Seven small chairs at the kitchen table, seven tiny dishes, seven miniature cups, and at least seven months of dust on everything. Snow White thought that surely these children didn't have a mother because the cottage was in such shambles. So she began to tidy up the place, dusting the furniture, sweeping the floor, washing the dishes, and finally preparing dinner. She was so tired by now that she went into the bedroom and quickly fell asleep on one of the little soft beds. The owners of the cottage were not children at all but seven little half-sized men called dwarfs. Each of these had an unusual name. There was uh, willful, careful, wishful, thankful, watchful, thoughtful, and neverful, who was always hungry. On this night, when they came home from working in the mines, they were particularly tired and hungry. As soon as they opened the door, they realized something was different. Look at this place. It's spotless. Something very strange is going on here. Maybe a fairy came while we were away. A seven-course dinner already and waiting? Oh, I must remember to thank whoever it was. It could be a trick. Maybe that wicked old witch Malicious is after us again. Oh, I hope not. Everything looks so nice and smells so delicious. I don't care if it's a trick or not. I haven't seen a meal like this in seven years, and I'm starving. All the other dwarfs stood around Neverfull, waiting for him to turn green or dry up or disappear. But when he stayed the same color and just kept on eating, they all sat down at the table and joined in. Mm, that was delicious. Is there any dessert? Hey, come here, quick. In the bedroom, there's a little girl asleep on my bed. Maybe she's an enchantress or a witch. Don't be silly. She's just a young girl. And so very beautiful. And such a good cook. Just then, Snow White began to stir. When she awoke, she was startled to see the seven dwarfs. After they introduced themselves, Snow White told them the story of how she came to be in their cottage and about her cruel stepmother. You know, I've always thought it was strange that the king would marry someone with the name Militia. Up until the marriage, there was an old witch who lived deep in the forest. Her name was Malicious. Really? Yep, and from what you've said, it sounds like something Malicious would do. I'll wager Queen Militia is the Wicked Witch Malicious in disguise. But she doesn't know where I am. Thank goodness for that. You'll be safe with us. That's very kind of you, Thankful. But I couldn't stay here. Nonsense! You must stay. We insist. Please stay. Yes, you must please stay. And cook for us. <laughs> you make it hard for me to say no. Very well, then. I shall stay. Yay! She's she going to stay! Oh, when the huntsman returned to the castle with the heart of a wild boar in the jeweled box, Queen Alicia thought Snow White was dead. Then, one day, the queen approached her magic mirror. Magic mirror on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? Oh, Queen Militia, truly fair. There's one who's still beyond compare. Snow White lives on in the forest deep, where seven dwarves their watch do keep. The huntsman tricked me. I will see that he gets his just reward. But first, I must destroy Snow White myself. The queen drank a potion, 
and waited for it to take effect. Suddenly, there was a huge puff of smoke. And when it all cleared, the queen had changed back into her real self, the wicked witch malicious. <laughs> then she began to stir a large cauldron filled with every ingredient she could find. Malicious disguised herself as an old peddler woman. Then she jumped on her broom and away she flew. <laughs> the witch rode deep into the black forest until she came to the cottage of the seven dwarfs. Who's there? Uh, uh, just an old peddler woman. Uh, won't you buy a sweet red apple? Oh, I'm sorry, but the dwarfs warned me that I mustn't let anyone inside. Oh, what harm can an old woman do? Won't you please let me sit and rest my weary bones? Oh, I know the dwarfs would not want me to be unkind to a dear old woman like you. Please, come in. What a thoughtful girl you are, and so beautiful. Uh, here is a reward for your kindness. What a lovely apple. Oh, but I couldn't take it. I insist. You're not afraid of me, are you? Here, I'll prove it won't hurt you. I'll take the first bite. Now go ahead, eat it. As soon as she touched the apple to her lips, Snow White fell to the floor. When the dwarfs returned home, they found their Would beloved Snow White lying still on the floor and tried to revive her, but it was to no avail. They sadly agreed she was dead. Let's get to work. So the seven little men built a crystal casket. They placed Snow White in it and carried her carefully to the top of a hill in the prettiest glen in the forest. Then one day, as Thankful was keeping watch, he heard a horse approaching. He looked up and saw a handsome prince riding a white stallion. The prince rode up to the casket and stopped. Little man, who is that beautiful creature sleeping there? I must know her name. She is called Snow White, but she's not asleep, Your Highness. She is dead. Strange. But I feel as though Snow White is not dead. I'm from a neighboring kingdom, and I saw her in a dream last night. In that dream, she showed me the way here. Help me lift her from the box. The dwarf did as he was commanded because he could see that the prince truly did love Snow White and would bring her no harm. The handsome prince held her tenderly and gave her a gentle kiss. Suddenly, Snow White began to stir and opened her eyes. Look! She's alive! She's alive! Where am I? You're with me now, and that's all that matters. My love for you is stronger than any spell Malicious can cast. Oh, is it now? We'll see about that. Malicious, what are you doing here? Malicious appeared victorious as she looked down upon the trio from the limb of a tall tree. She pointed her long, bony finger at Snow White. Rebel, drabble, scary all. From this day forth, you shall be a frog. But the old witch had very poor eyesight, and what she thought was Snow White was really her own reflection in the nearby pond. Suddenly, there was a puff of smoke, and a large green frog fell from the tree into the pond. It didn't take long after that for the prince and Snow White to be married. They lived happily together in the prince's castle for the rest of their lives, 
and every summer, they never fail to visit the cottage of the seven dwarfs and let their children eat from the tiny dishes and sleep in the tiny beds, just as their mother had done many years before. The end. <laughs>